Uh, welcome to another episode of Tool Tuesdays. This is episode two, and uh, this week I wanted to talk about um, axes uh, and shaping knives and the things that you can do with axes. So I have quite a collection of axes and hatchets from uh, different places. Um, it's kind of one of the first things that my daughter Christina, uh, she came up with the idea. Um, I guess I'll start small. We have, I have an, uh, my Mora knife, it's stainless steel. Yeah. yeah, it's sharp. Like when you put it on your thumb like this, it won't slide across. <clears throat> um, then I have, and you can use the knife for shaping. And I have, uh, this is a, uh, it's kind of a throwaway hatchet that I bought for doing hatchet throwing. I bought two of them. One was lost in the woods. Uh, it's just made in Germany with a hickory, USA hickory ha handle called an Adler. Um, and then the other small one, and these are really kind of neat. I got these at Woodcraft, an, an American company. And these are, are bison. Um, made in Germany. They have a and you can see that picture of a bison on there. Also comes with a little metal bison, bison thing that I think works as a bottle opener. Um, it has a nice leather, you know, there's bison on the leather thing. It has a nice leather sheath. Um, hand forged. I had originally been looking at like Swedish hand forged uh, tools. These are like for carving of bowls, stuff like that. Notice that it has a little bit of a protection there for your hand when you're like shaving wood. So it's, this is more of a shaving thing, um, bowl making, spoon making, making small implements like that. Um, sharpen it up, really steel. It's hand forged uh, in Germany by Bison is the um, company in Germany that besides being from... Uh, 1879 they're the ones that supply all the uh, the fire departments in Germany with their axes um, so yeah so that one here is more for shape and you wouldn't be going out limbing trees with that um, you know you could find other small purposes mostly I got this for like my wife and I sometimes carve bowls carve spoons and everything it's really good for roughing stuff out um, the other one we got from them was like, like it was really kind of hard to find this. So that was 78 US dollars. And if you bought a Swedish made Grand Forest Brooks, you're looking at like $325 for a hatchet. And they're both hand forged steel. And I, I don't think that there's a, much difference between German steel and Swedish steel. They're both hand forged. My feeling is is that this company in Germany just started getting online and started getting sales because it, it took quite a while for, to get delivery. Um, it was during COVID. Um, so they were, they were really backed up. Anyways, another one of their, their axes, and this is what their fire department axes look like. That's a really strange shape that I was really intrigued by. It's a mountain hatchet. And I guess you can see that if you were up in, in the mountains and had to, this is, goes a bit wider. So for splitting wood, it would work. For chopping down trees, it would work. Just a good general purpose hatchet axe. Um, I also have regular axes, uh, a Mastercraft, an old axe that I buy for that I bought for chopping tree roots and stuff. Uh, I have another one for um, splitting wood. Um, and then I have this one, a double-sided ax. And this is not made for splitting wood because it's, it's very narrow here. It actually makes a when you're chopping because it's very, uh, I hike um, a lot of stainless steel in here, like a lot of German tools have. I need to sharpen this. Somebody's been chopping it into a rock. 
Anyways, you can sharpen these two different ways. Um, they're mostly made for tree felling. Um, I don't have the wind to fell a tree with something like this anymore. They also make competition uh, axes, double-sided axes for competitions. This you could use in competitions, um, but they have a much more expensive one. Got this at Lee Valley a few years ago. Um, and like I said, you can, you can sharpen one side a little bit steeper than the other um, for felling trees. I use this for limbing. I tend to find that rather than limbing with a chainsaw and having to go through all that brush, this thing when it's sharp works just about as, as fast or sometimes even faster because they don't have to get my footing quite as good. The other thing, other, is my old standby and S-wing. It's got a, a, a fairly high amount of chrome in it. It's very sharp. I hook this into my belt when I drop a tree and I'll use the, um, the uh, it's called an oxen cup, uh, ox head. I use that for doing the big branches and then, you know, there's a lot of little ones. So I just go and whack, 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 just go up a tree really quick. It doesn't make any sense wasting gas on the chainsaw or, or, or the electricity on the chainsaw for cutting little branches when you can do it with these tools. And, and this thing's pretty handy. It's got a, a leather handle on it to, uh, to um, absorb shock. The other thing that I wanted to show you is I got a couple of these. They're called German camping axes. I don't know. They're from Etsy and it's made in Romania or something. They're also hand forged. And you can see the nice thing about this is it's got, if you're doing shaping or let's say you, you it, it has enough weight that you can split wood with it if you're camping or, or if you're outdoors or just want to be handy. You can protect your knuckles with it this way. But the other reason I bought it is for hewing wood or shaping wood. Um, so I have this for hewing wood and I also, my son-in-law found this blade at a garage sale. So I ground it down. Well, you can't really grind it because you can't heat the tip of it. So I use my Tormek on it. Um, got it flat there and I made the handle out of ash that I had at home. So what do you do with something like that and something like this? Okay. So, hewing logs. One of the things you can do is This thing, I got to get this thing to stay in place. I've never done this before, hewed log, but I've seen it often enough. So you go from one end of the tree to the other, you find the center. Okay, and the log should be more level. <laughs> just as pretend it is. And then you would just take this at the center of the tree and snap a chalk line. Then you would take uh, either a level and you'd probably mark the outside edges for the size that you'd want because you've got to mark both ends and, you're, and both ends are going to be symmetrical because you're working from the center of the tree out. So you're going to have a square on each end. You can either use the level or they probably have instruments that they set up just for this or you could use a square. Hold the square on there and then mark it up here. Mark it here. It's kind of moving a little bit. And then whatever measurement you decided on, then you would square that down or use the plumb bob and you would mark it and so you would mark a square so you have, let's say you have a square on this side and you're going to come out so you're going to 
about to, to there. Okay. So what you do is you take one of your axes. This is probably a good one for that. You would chop all the bark off going down from one side to the other on both top halves. Then you take your chalk line, pull your chalk line from the corner of one side to the corner of the other. You would, and then pull the chalk line from the corner of one side to the other. Now, the next thing you do is they would generally put it on a, a, a bit of a stand. And then you would have a chalk line that you would see looking from the top down. So about every 16 inches you would take an axe like this and you would chop wedges into the wood up to the chalk line. All the way down. Okay, so when you see all these barn beams and beams they use in old houses, that's the way they were made. So you take an axe like this and you would go down and then you would chop all that to one level. Next, there's two ways of doing this next part. I bought this for doing it. So what you can do is you can go down and you can start working on chopping it flat. Okay, you, you probably use that, this, this wider axe or a different axe just to kind of break the blocks out, right, that are in between, there'll be blocks. And then you just go down like this. Now, am I getting that straight? Of course the bark would be gone first. A lot of times these tools will actually be bent to the right or to the left so it's flatter against the wood to make it easy but I'm, I'm not going to go and buy two of these because I don't do this for a living it's just something I wanted to do and something I thought I'd tell people about. Now the other thing that's why I got this is you would take this roll it up on its back I suggest safety boots and then you would just go along and then you would chop down and then you would make a smooth face on one side flip it over that would this would make it on the top flip it over make a smooth face on the other side <sighs> probably a good idea to use both tools um, That one probably would get rid of a lot at once and you could go down a board really quickly and then you would just take this one here and just, if these are really sharp, they're almost like a hand plane. And you can go down and you can hew a log for a beam. And after that it's, uh, you got your beam and start cutting your mortise and tenons for your barn. So that's the way it was done in the day. Um, I haven't done this yet. Actually, I know how to do it. I don't have a reason to do it because they don't want to do that much work. But um, it's it's just if I have a tree that's been felled, uh, there's a couple down by the water uh, where we have a fire, and there are cedar trees that I split in half with wedges, like metal wedges. Split them in half, and then I just go along with this, or or with the got the name of that. Probably put it in the in the picture below, like below this. Um, or go along with this and make it smooth because obviously if you just split it it's going to have like splinters and stuff. So that's it for uh, this. Ooh, that was gonna fall. Tool Tuesday. See you next time.